um, dear participants, uh, dear panelists, and dear all, um, thank you very much for being with us uh, today at the ETF Unimed joint event uh, on micro credentials, hype or hope. One of the many interesting events uh, that are featuring in the Unimed week. The event is organized in the framework of the cooperation between ETF and Unimed. And of course, we thank very much our Unimed uh, colleagues and friends for uh, hosting us and for giving us the opportunity to talk about this uh, very interesting topic. So uh, I work at ETF. My name is uh, Sabina Nari and I am uh, the regional focal point for the Southern and Eastern Mediterranean. And uh, um, I will have the pleasure today to guide you through the event as a moderator. As you have seen uh, in the abstract, the event will explore the concept of micro-credentials uh, based on the Euro European Union and other global initiatives uh, and experiences, ideas, uh, perceptions uh, of participants uh, as regards possibilities uh, and challenges posed by micro-credentials. So we will hear uh, the experience uh, from um, uh, my colleagues uh, from the ETF, from the survey on micro-credentials, but also from uh, representative from the Unimed network, uh, notably uh, the Bethlehem University. So uh, there will be time dedicated to the discussion and uh, I will <laughs> come back to that uh, later. But of course, uh, we uh, are encouraging you to use the chat or to raise your hand uh, when the moment will come. If you want to ask questions in the chat and you don't want to wait for the uh, discussion time, please do so and we will take the uh, questions uh, during the discussion time. So we can move now to our uh, first uh, uh, session, the welcoming session, and we have the pleasure to have here today um, the UNIMED director, uh, Marcello Scalisi, and Manuela Prina, uh, head of Skis Identification and Development Unit at the ETF. Marcello, the floor is yours. Grazie, Sabina. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone speakers and to all our participants and uh, obviously a uh, warm welcome to Manuela Prina for his, her participation to this important moment of cooperation among our institutions. I'm very honored to, to, to open this session but in particular to continue the cooperation that we are doing with the European Training Foundation for a small organization like UNIMED, the network of universities it's a particular privilege to have uh, such cooperation with the ETF, uh, which is based not only about the importance of cooperation among institutions that we and so on, but is uh, related to a concrete framework of activities that we are trying, obviously, uh, to manage in such difficult time and such a difficult moment. Um, the main idea of this cooperation with ETF is related to, to the fact that the vocational educational sector and the higher education sector, the higher education institutions, have, have to cooperate. This is mandatory in, in every society, not only in the southern Mediterranean region, but it's more important for sure in southern Mediterranean region. This is the reason why we are very honored and pleased to cooperate with ETF to learn about what is possible to do more and more, and to have a look in particular to new opportunities, new, uh, new activity that we could plan thanks to the knowledge and the competencies managed by ETF. In particular, to talk about micro-credential, I think that is extremely important for our universities. We already discussed this several times, also with our colleague from the University of Bethlehem, Amadi Claybaugh, and other colleagues during the experiences that we did with the virtual the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange uh, program, for instance, and many other occasions. But for sure, there is the need to improve the capacity of our uh, universities. I have to say probably on this topic, both sides, not only in Southern European countries, but also in the European uh, universities. And I think that this webinar will be an important occasion to learn and to see how the future of this opportunity 
And uh, I already discussed, for instance, during the webinar with the European Commission on DG Education and Culture, when we discussed about the future of an international cooperation, if micro credential could be a priority for new projects, idea, new capacity building projects. And colleague Herman Bernard Rios clearly said yes, for sure. This is the reason why I think this webinar is not only an informative session, but could be uh, something to, uh, in a way, to inspire us for uh, future, but not so long in, in the long term, but future opportunities talking about the future call of the Erasmus. Uh, Unimed, for sure, will continue to support our members to improve their capacity on employability and entrepreneurship sector and so on. And obviously, in this sense, the cooperation with ETF is extremely important. And we will continue to push you to help us, obviously, to in, in this in this. Thank you very much again for your participation. Thank you very much again to our ETF colleagues for your commitment and also for the friendship that we established on us, which is extremely obvious, very important because to do things in a very positive environment is surely better. And this is the case with you. And I will stay with you for all the session and uh, I am very curious to learn more. Thank you very much again, Sabina. Thank you, Marcello, for your kind words and also for these perspectives uh, on our continued cooperation also in the future. Uh, I give the floor now to Manuela. Good morning uh, to all of you. And uh, on behalf of ETF, uh, a, a, a big thank to UNIMED for uh, organizing uh, uh, this series of uh, workshops uh, and uh, uh, also this discussion on micro-credentials, which is uh, something that is uh, uh, really, um, let's say, important in our dossier and in our reflection uh, for the future. Uh, so you will hear today some of the uh, work uh, uh, that uh, the team uh, is bringing forward as regards micro-credentials. Uh, but uh, um, more importantly, I think today is really an opportunity to exchange, to debate, uh, and to uh, also contribute uh, to this joint reflection around this question. No, micro credentials, uh, hype or hope. I think it, the title is uh, extremely interesting. Uh, and I'm not sure we will have an answer by the end of the webinar. But for sure, we will uh, uh, get out of it uh, with uh, more ideas. There are only two points that I want to uh, bring on the table uh, to, let's say, inform the discussion today. The first uh, is, uh, of course, the um, uh, observation uh, about the reality of the world of education and the world of work. Uh, which is a word that is uh, increasing in its complexity and in its diversity. I was talking a few days ago to a group of uh, policy makers uh, in an academy on Tibet, and we were actually defining this time, the time of diversity or the time of diversities. So the question is, uh, uh, I think, uh, how, uh, if we look at the itinerary of how policies have been responding to needs of people and societies as regard the provision of education and how the system gets organized to actually match and uh, interface with the labor market, where is today the place of individual and how can we really focus uh, on uh, uh, individual needs to diversify opportunities uh, and also recognize them at its uh, maximum? So in this context, I think that debate on micro-credential is uh, extremely important. Uh, it's something that is also forcing uh, us uh, to think in a different direction. Sometimes I would say also out of the box. Uh, and also to look at many things that we have constructed over the years and that are also functioning quite well, uh, to think if we have to transform them, keep them or drop them. 
And uh, this is uh, a reflection that uh, it's, uh, I think, very important when we look at, of course, qualifications, uh, we look at micro-credentials, but we look in particular at the needs of people uh, as regard uh, their skilling, upskilling and reskilling throughout life. So I wish everybody a good uh, webinar today. Uh, and I really hope very much that uh, we will progress with giving an answer to this question, micro-credentials, hype or hope. And thanks to all of you. Back to you, Sabina. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to both uh, Marcello Scalisi and Manuela Prina. You have kept uh, really the time, uh, but provided uh, interesting insights uh, to warm up this uh, event today and um, to, to kick off the uh, topic. Uh, I saw that uh, Mr. Madi Klebo was uh, smiling, so later when he will have his intervention, he will tell us why. Um, thank Manuela. Thank you, Manuela. I know we, we, you have to leave, so thank you very much for being with us. And uh, Bye. And uh, so we move now to our first uh, uh, introductory session on the topic. Uh, um, I guess that uh, uh, we are here with the many um, uh, professional and uh, experts of the topic. For me, it's somehow new, so I'm very curious to know more about my, my about my micro credentials from uh, our panelists and. Uh, so we, in this first session, we will introduce the topic and also the focus of our webinar today. And to do that, that we, we have my colleague, Arian Day, Senior Specialist in Qualification Systems. Arian, the floor is, is yours. You have around, um, well, you had 10 minutes, now you have a bit less. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try really to do this as quickly as possible. I've made some slides just to guide a little bit the discussion, but uh, we're going quite quickly because uh, actually we also want to hear from you and we want to hear from the others. So, so we do this type, title, hyper-hope. I mean, uh, when you look at the uh, micro-credentials, then of course we, 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 we look very much at the situation of young people in the Mediterranean. And we see, of course, a lot of them unemployed. Uh, so, so the idea is, Will micro-credentials really offer new learning and employment opportunities to learners and universities uh, in the Mediterranean? Is it the tool that will help us to address better, especially those people who already left university or left school, to address them so that they, they can become more employable? And is this really a thing that universities should massively engage on? Now, I just want to draw your attention to a study that my colleagues did which is unlocking the potential of use in the South and East Mediterranean. There's a very nice also uh, uh, YouTube video that introduces this study, but really shows uh, that we are not using the potential of the use uh, sufficiently. So, so that is a bit the problem. Of course, that's also the hope that we can tap into this potential. So the hype, the hype is really linked to the the numbers of, of searches. I did the search yesterday and I saw that there were on, on Google 41,100,000 results of the search on micro credentials. So you can see it's a big issue. It's coming up. And, and the issue is, is very much linked to also with uh, what, what are these uh, micro credentials? What, what could they address? For instance, I found here an article that says the skill gap means companies are increasingly considering candidates with non-traditional paths. So could targeted bite-sized chunks of education help you to get a job? So it's, it's to make yourself, let's say, to distinguish yourself from, from the rest. And if you have a micro-credentials, how can you actually use it in your resume? Essentially, how does this benefit me professionally? So that, these are the questions that students have and that the universe should be able to answer. So, so this idea of micro-credentials is already uh, going on for a few years. And in Australia, they really have worked on this. Uh, when they looked at their Australian qualification framework, they say, we want to make it easier for Australians to move between vocational education, higher education, to earn micro-credential qualifications that will improve the productivity. They speak about 
mix and match. So you just take a bit of a qualification here and a bit of a qualification there, and you make the mix that is good for yourself, that matches with your needs. Uh, also, the European Union has been very much looking at these macro credentials. There has been a study done last year on higher education, but also there's a study on growing on that at the moment. And uh, there is also a consultation that has just ended. And, and, and the idea there is to look at targeted acquisition of skills and competences, which should not replace traditional qualifications, but they are additional and they give value to micro credentials. So, so to give these, uh, so that you can do something more with it, develop a common definition and the European standards for the quality, transparency and cost border compatibility. So it's, it's important that we know what these uh, micro credentials are so that we can start recognizing them. Uh, so, so they need to be understandable for any awarding body and they, they, uh, we need to try to use the tools that we already have so that we can introduce them quickly. So uh, UNESCO has, has, has set up a, a committee of experts, uh, Anatoly was part of this, where they really looked at, uh, can we not define a common universal uh, definition of micro credentials? So, and then the idea was, okay, let's look first of what are credentials. Credentials, they verify, validate, and confirm a, burning, a person's learning achievement. So this is about confirming what a person has learned. And then you have micro, micro credentials. So these are the big ones. These are the diplomas for a vet, uh, uh, or these are the, the bachelor's and master degrees. They are micro credentials. And they, let's say, they cover a lot of different types of diplomas. And micro-credentials also cover a, a, a lot of different types of, of smaller credentials. So they are typically focused on a specific set of learning outcomes in a narrow field of learning, and they achieved over a shorter period of time. So, so micro-credentials, they can be offered by all types of organizations. These can be commercial organizations, these can be universities, these can be vet providers, can be employment services. So it's, it's not, not linked to a specific type of provider. And many micro-credentials, they represent outcomes of more traditional learning experiences. So they could be part of a, a bigger qualification, but they could also be standing alone. Uh, so, so, so that is, it is quite wide what, what we talk about here. So uh, micro-credentials, they're, they're often promoted as an efficient way to upskill workers across the lifespan. And this is really where also the European Union is invested, because we've seen that with the, with the COVID crisis, we see really a very destructive effect on the labor market, and people really need to be uh, trained. Also to keep up with the green and, and, the, and the digital transition. So a micro-credential, according to UNESCO, is a record of a focused learning achievement, verifying what the learner knows, understands and can do, so the learning outcomes. It includes assessment based on clearly defined standards and is awarded by a trusted provider. It has a standalone value and may also contribute or complement other micro-credentials or micro-credentials, so it can be combined. And you can also use it for recognition of prior learning and it meets the standards required uh, by relevant quality assurance. So that's the definition. Now, uh, for today, what we really want to focus on is, uh, um, do, you, do we have a common understanding of what this is? And uh, how can we use these micro-credentials in our context? And uh, would we be able to explain the usefulness afterwards? Would we be able to understand what are the challenges? Uh, is this a hype that will pass away? Or will it be a real hope for developing new things? And participants should be able to jointly decide also on what are the next steps. So, but you won't earn a micro-credential with this uh, webinar, I'm sorry. So from here, we have to go to the content. And I, I give the floor back to Sabina so that we can really start focusing on more on what are what is our understanding of micro credentials 
and some examples with Mahdi uh, giving us a real good example of that layer. Thank you. Thank and you. And I stop sharing. Yes, please. Thank you, Arian. Um, Yes, as, as Arian has already perfectly introduced uh, the next uh, um, point uh, on our agenda, uh, we will look into the key findings of the international survey carried out by the ETF. And to do that, uh, we will be guided by my colleague Anatoly Garmash, who is a senior specialist in qualification systems at the ETF. Anatoly, the floor is yours. You have around 20 minutes. Uh, um. We don't hear you. Mm. Thank, yes. Thank, thank, yes. Thank, yes. thank you, Sabina. Good morning, everybody. Do you see the slides? Yeah. Okay, um, so our survey on micro credentials, a better understanding of micro credentials, what micro credentials are what micro-credentials are not. This was the aim of our survey micro-credentials that we conducted last summer. And we promoted this surveys to the Unimet, Unimet network as well. And thank you those who participated in it and thank you organizers, organizers for this opportunity to present the results of the survey. So uh, our survey, focused on understanding of micro-credentials, how micro-credentials are seen by different actors and stakeholders, in particular in relation to, to credentials or micro-credentials that are issued in countries. We focused, with our survey, we focused on advantages and challenges of the use of micro-credentials, as well as on the quality assurance and recognition of micro-credentials. We also tried to collect examples of existing micro-credentials, opinions on applications of their uptakes, and uh, what support is needed. Uh, our survey focused mostly on ETF partner countries, but we succeeded to collect almost 500 responses from 60 countries all over the world. Main stakeholders who provided input in our survey were vet schools and higher education institutions. We targeted also other uh, stakeholders such as non formal education and training providers, nas national authorities and agencies, and labor market stakeholders. So, how micro credentials are understood uh, by different stakeholders? What are micro credentials? Uh, the results of the survey show that micro-credentials are mostly associated with, uh, with these four types of certificates. With the certificates which certify upskilling or reskilling short courses, both in formal and non-formal settings, parts of formal education programs, professional certificates, certificates of competence awarded by professional or other authorized bodies, and certificates which certify validation of non-formal and formal work. We also ask the respondents what credentials are not the micro-credentials, are not micro-credentials, why credentials are not micro-credentials. And uh, a credential is considered not to be a micro-credential if it doesn't include assessment of skills or competences, that is, that means that there is no micro-credential without assessment. And a credential is not micro-credential when it is a full formal education qualification. A credential is not a micro-credential when it has no standalone value. That is, micro-credential should be meaningful, either as a meaningful unit of a qualification or complementary, supplementary treat. And here, relationship with the full qualification is underlined. A credential is not micro-credential when it is not subject to quality assurance process and when it doesn't represent a small volume of learning outcomes. This underlines that 
microcredentials represent short learning achievement, which correspond to short, to short period of learning. In relation to expression in credits, uh, the respondents uh, see that microcredentials uh, are credit bearing when they represent units of formal education programs, mostly in higher education. Vocational education and training representatives, unlike higher education, do not associate microcredentials micro with credits. And this is mainly because there are no credit system for VET in our, for most of our partner countries. However, it was noticed that micro-credentials micro -credential, could be linked with European credit system for vocational education and training. A general opinion is that some micro-credentials will bear credit and some not. For instance, simply because they are too small to bear credit. Uh, Microcredentials are generally are generally considered are generally not considered as part of the NPF, and this is mainly because there, there is no operational NPF in in partner in, in the countries where respondents come from. Or microcredentials are linked to validation on non-formal non-formal informal learning, which when it also is not a part of national qualification framework. But in case when the inclusion of microcredential into the NKF is allowed, which is the case of, of the UK, microcredential possibly may be included at all levels of the national qualification framework. We asked participants what are the most important features of microcredentials. And here I underlined the most important features as seen by the respondents. So, micro-credentials reflect both individual learning experience and the result of assessment of individual, individual's learning skills and competencies. And here again, it is underlined, emphasized that micro-credentials, there is no micro-credentials without assessment. And uh, this may, this can rule out learning experience which are currently considered as micro-credentials, for example, certificates of attendance. On the, on the other hand, this feature underlines that micro-credentials focus on specific skills and competencies. The other important feature mentioned is that micro-credentials should have a relationship to existing qualifications. As part of a qualification, supplemental component. The other opinions on the report, stakeholders differ in their opinions on other important features of micro-credentials. For example, higher education institutions consider that uh, as, as the other important features of micro-credentials, their relevance, that they address current specific needs of a learner employer, stackability, that micro-credentials can be aggregated towards qualifications, and that, that they can add international dimension. Uh, respondents emphasize two aims of micro-credentials. That micro-credentials are used to address a specific work need, and micro-credentials are used to recognize learning outcomes achieved outside formal education. But uh, opinions of of stakeholders for other aims, for other motivations of different of micro credentials differ. Thus, vet schools would use micro credentials to motivate learners and improve learner transition from education to work. Higher education institution would use micro credentials to support transitions to new jobs with new skills requirements to address skills gaps and to motivate learners. National authorities and agencies see that micro-credentials should be used to address skill gaps, facilitate formalization of new skills and support transition to new jobs. And labor market stakeholders again see that their usefulness in recognizing learning outcomes outside from 
outside from the education. We asked uh, about main advantages of uh, market credentials. And these are the main points which were emphasized by the response, by the respondents. Market credentials have immediate relevance to the labor market demand when they are linked to specific skills competencies and they address a specific work need and that's why they're responsive to changes in the labor market. Market credentials support individual learning, focused on specific learning needs. They allow learners to progress at their own space. Micro credentials have standalone value. That is, micro credentials should be meaningful. They have a meaning at the labor market and they are adding value to formal education qualification. Micro credentials facilitate recognition of individual skills, knowledge, and competencies, including recognition of learning achievements outside formal education. They facilitate the design of flexible training and their cost and time saving. What are challenges and concerns in relation to the uptake and use of market credentials? First of all, this is the lack of specific regulations. The respondents suggested that micro credentials, micro credentials are generally not recognized in the country because there is no regulation for them. The other concerns are that there is there are no agreed quality, there is no agreed quality framework and low awareness and lack of information. Higher education institutions concerns are related to commercialization, commercialization of the issue of micro credentials and resistance to change from some key stakeholders. The other two major concerns expressed by the participants in the survey are related to portability of micro credentials. Thus, after having received a number of micro credentials, learners risk to end up with no qualification that is possible, portable. And the other major concern is that micro -credential, micro credentials may reduce the uptake of existing qualifications. But however, a general opinion is that the benefits that market credentials could offer to individual businesses outweigh all these concerns. Quality assurance of market credentials is considered differently by different stakeholders. Uh, thus, vocational education and training schools and higher education institutions see quality assurance of micro credentials and the existing institutional program accreditation. National authorities and agencies, labor market stakeholders, non-formal education and training providers, providers see quality assurance of micro credentials as part of quality assurance of certification and assessment process. The other modalities proposed by the participants is the, is the quality assurance of micro credentials under the principles of the EQF. And, and here we may refer to the EQF recommendation on quality assurance of qualifications. And the other option is that micro credentials could be quality assured under labor market regulation. That is, professional bodies or companies that issue micro credentials should are responsible for their quality assurance according to their own specific criteria. Recognition of micro credential is considered as part of the recognition of non-formal and informal learning, but it was noted that this is the case when results of validation of non-formal and informal learning are recognized as part of a qualification. Again, the relationship with a formal qualification is underlying. The other option is to recognize micro credentials through credit recognition of accreditation and through their or through their inclusion into the into the NPF, again under the principles of quality assurance of the NPF. I think it, it is important to uh, 
it is important to say a couple of words about implications of uptake and use of microcredentials. So these are suggestions uh, of the participants uh, regarding the implications of the uptake and use. Microcredentials support the development of lifelong learning systems. So that lifelong learning to, to, to become a reality, all learning should be recognized and microcredential will ensure more possibilities for lifelong learning learners to get recognition of, of their learning. Microcredential strengthen the design of qualification and educational programs. They facilitate, they facilitate, uh, they facilitate use of flexible modular approaches, unitization of qualifications, and they lead even to greater requirements for recognition of learning achievements. Learning opportunities will become more relevant and responsive to a change in labor market requirements and learners needs. Thus, micro-credentialing pathways serve as a route for just-in-time learning, but informed by real job requirements or priority needs. Micro-credentials better represent individual achievements, reflecting individual skills and competencies acquired. Micro-credentials increase mobility and flexibility of the workforce. Simply, they will bring more certified, work, certified workforce on a dynamic labor market, thus adding value for businesses and economy and the economy as a whole. Um, so, what what are the opinions of responsible of respondents uh, about the support? What support is needed? These are their opinions. First, defining a commonly agreed understanding of micro credentials. Designing and approval of enabling regulations of framework conditions for the uptake and use of micro credentials. Aligning micro credentials with existing quality assurance processes, instruments, and contexts. Sharing knowledge and best practice of micro credentials and financing short training courses. So we need a common understanding of micro-credentials. We need regulations dedicated for micro-credentials. We need quality assurance and sharing knowledge and experience. And uh, my last slide uh, is uh, on defining the concept of micro-credentials. What might be the key components for the definition of micro Credentials. And uh, the results of the su survey show that uh, these four components might be proposed as uh, key components of micro credentials. Micro credentials are skill or competency focused. Micro credentials represent learning achievements in a specific skill or competence. Standards based assessment. Micro-credentials represent skill or competency standards used for the assessment. Quality. Organizations that award micro-credentials are responsible for developing these standards and they have responsibility to, to ensure that the assessment process meets the requirements of these standards and recognition. Micro-credentials can be recognized and the recognition of prior learning process, including through credit recognition and accumulation towards the qualification. And I think this proposal corresponds to the UNESCO proposal on global definition of micro-credentials, which Aaron referred to earlier in his presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I apologize. Th this I apologize that this was rather a technical presentation and I have overloaded you, overloaded you with a lot of information. For those interested, uh, there is a link available to the results uh, of our CV. It is on the slide too. And uh, I, I hope that soon uh, 
the, the final report with the results of our survey will be published on the ETF open source. Thank you again. Back to Sabina. Thank you very much, Anatoly. Maybe uh, the link that is on the slide, if you can kindly yes. um, also share it in the chat for all our uh, participants. Um, and if you can kindly stop sharing uh, the slides. Yes. Um, thank you very much. I think the topic is indeed taking shape and um, is adding and supporting the understanding of the micro-credentials um, as, uh, as one of our expected objectives for today. Um, we now move to a concrete example, um, which is uh, uh, brought today uh, from a representative of the UNIMED network, um, the Bethlehem University. Uh, we will look at how uh, micro-credentials are integrated as part of uh, the internationalization of uh, Bethlehem University. And uh, uh, we have here today, we have the pleasure of having here today, uh, Mr. Madi Klebo, um, who is business lecturer, uh, external academic relations official coordinator, is furthermore uh, Erasmus Plus project and virtual mobility program coordinator and facilitator. I hope that uh, <laughs> I, uh, I reported well your, your title. In any case, I take the opportunity to say that the biographies, short biographies of our, our, of our panelists are available on uh, uh, on the on the UNIMED uh, uh, week website and if uh, uh, you have more precise information there I ask UNIMED colleagues if you can share on the on the chat so um, Mr. Klebo the floor is yours can you hear me excellent well there's a lot to talk about what we have some little time but first uh, on the top of the list, I would like to say that Manuela mentioned something very important, which is the complexity and the diversity of this topic and how can we create policies. So I hope that by having this discussion, we will be like generating a kind of a policy in the future and we will be part of developing this policy, especially that we're talking about different challenges in the region. So this is exactly what I see UNIMED is simply filling the gap and connecting the worlds and simply creating a harmony and transfer of best knowledge and best practices. Uh, I would like just to grasp the opportunity to say to Mr. Hamid bin Al-Aziza, who's drafting a comment on the side, he mentioned something very important and it captured my attention, that actually we are participating in order to reduce the percentage of poverty, especially in using academia. So his comment is very true and this is part of participation definitely it will not solve or eliminate but it's only a contribution so this micro credentials might open a kind of a new port that is a new port which uh, Mr. Arjun mentioned it before especially in his presentation he mentioned how important it is to connect the labor market expectations with what we are doing in academia and having the micro credentials as part of the development might open a lot of doors and opportunities especially that in the era of the coronavirus, everything has changed. We are still living in a chaos. So this topic that we're discussing today, I'm so delighted that it's documented and we can work on it definitely. Nevertheless, uh, as Mr. Uh, Anatoly mentioned, and he mentioned it several times, it's so important for the national authorities to accredit the cycle because if they do not accredit any of what we are doing, there's no hope to do anything. So accreditation, and it's, by the way, it's very important because we're talking about assessments, measurements, quality assurance, all these uh, uh, things that uh, uh, Mr. Anatoly mentioned, it's very important. We're not developing something out of nowhere. We're developing something based on really scientific assessment. So I hope that, um, 
this will open further doors to have best practices. The thing in law that I would like to say that I had a quarrel between me and myself, which hat should I wear today? Should I be the lecturer or should I be the Erasmus Plus or should I be the person in charge of the external academic office? I can create three different scripts, three different scenarios with three different perspectives on the same topic, but I have chosen today to, to wear the, the cap and the hat of the lecturer because I have implemented these practices for the past three years and I have passed through the challenges and I created two scenarios. The first scenario, which is the real practices of uh, uh, accrediting uh, those uh, micro um, credentials in my courses. Nevertheless, I've had the quarrel to fight with the system in order to see how can I share my experiences and not have to uh, account to keep on recreating the wheel. That was my real challenge, and still it is my real challenge up to this moment, which is the uh, the how can we share these practices? So uh, today, first of all, I'm sorry for my interruption into going into a different path, but uh, I would like to say that we have all noticed during this long period of crisis imposed by the COVID-19, UNIMED has not stopped rejuvenating the Euro-Mediterranean cooperation and collaboration. With the latest achievement, sharing best practices through this forum for discussion and networking to keep on e-learning as one of the ways to keep learning alive. The pandemic has forced a massive shift away from learning and teaching in traditional settings, which physical interactions and replaced with technology, mainly digital technology that enable communication, collaboration and learning across distance. Educators cannot deny that the digital shift is a complicated tool and it does not solve all our institutional problems. Still, we cannot ignore that it remains a source of innovation and expanded potentials. It truly really brought many existing internationalization best patterns and trends to the surface. Micro-credentials are quickly gaining interest nowadays as they are instrumental in supporting upskilling in response to the rapid transformation in the labor market. By applying micro-credentials, educators and students expand knowledge as it encapsulates dialogue and mutual exchange of information. The real gain is the massive exposure to the intercultural experience. All leads towards structuring graduates talk towards self-awareness by reinforcing their globalization citizenship. Knowledge exchange and micro-credentials collaboration activities may not come naturally to smoothly or smoothly integrate at the margin of our academic paradigm. Moving forward, we need to understand better the concept of micro-credentials with a better and more in-depth understanding of the business environment that can help providing teaching to provide students with flexibility, autonomy, accountability, and more in general with a learn-to-learn -learn attitude learning to learn attitude. We need to embrace a micro-credentials paradigm in all sectors and fields, which should orient our missions and activities and apply 21st century acceptable practices that target young graduates' employability. I believe the post-crisis would be more in depth, less global and more digital, according having embedded and integrated the micro-credentials into my teaching in the recent three years. I can assert that the outcome outcome has been positive and I highly recommend this approach. On a practical level, adopting these methods has developed me shift from a teacher-centered learning approach to a learner, learner and virtual training centralized practice. This is a genuine opportunity in, uh, in front of us today. We have an essential role and opportunity to play to create a new, even more healthy learning culture. We still have a long way to develop micro-credentials plan and learn how to bridge educators who conduct education and exchange programs to learn more about how to design, prepare, and facilitate future programming outreach. Therefore, strengthening micro-credentials opportunity became a part of transitioning from in-person to future employing opportunities by creating a new perspective of managing the transition from university to the world of work using a holistic approach. So here comes a question why there is a need to adapt and act quickly. 
as mentioned before by my colleague Agen, I hope that I pronounce it right, the job crisis is hitting fresh graduates as we confront a tough employment market and we cannot return to the world as it was before March 2020. We are heading into a real social crisis as the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered one of the worst job crises especially in Palestine, I would say. It's worldwide, but we are really having a problem in Palestine when it comes to job market and job opportunities and how can we interact with this as such a situation. Emerging jobs will require new skills and for such a transition, we need to keep our courses up to date and make learning more adapted to individual needs, which means to customize and personalize our services to create our digitalized identity and competitive edge. Therefore, there is an essential need to collect good practices for rebuilding a future for our home institution. Part of it is increasing the awareness and understanding of the risk associated with the global challenge. Uh, to plan for the future of education at higher education, I joined with the applied measures that have a job creation for all academic sectors. Micro-credentials can play a massive part in the solution. We are now addressing an important issue related to international labor market systems. In particular, this approach concerns micro-credentials connected to the new labor market. So, what are the fundamental theoretical steps we need to consider? Starting with an acceptance of the use of micro-credentials to be acknowledged and accredited by the Ministry of Higher Education, as uh, my colleague mentioned and referred to it as the uh, national authority. For this reason, to have the proper mindset to work with micro-credentials, there is a need to create an awareness campaign by collecting higher education institution collaboration on the evolving topic. This data will be required in designing and supporting the Ministry of Higher Education policy in supporting of higher education institutions future framework. There is a need to work with the inter and with the policymakers and influencers, official representatives and executors to receive feedback for evidence based policy development to have a better regulation and move towards the modernization of the framework conditions applied by the higher education institutions. Therefore, developing policies that address internal problems at the higher education institutions level will ultimately benefit the entire academic pyramid. This initiative will be an opportunity to look at the past, go on through suitable high demand globalized courses and learn more, more about our current and future programs. I know that I still have five minutes to, to grasp, so to be on schedule, there are three main pillars to apply this method. Step one, increasing social responsibility and ownership in the higher education system to face the new challenges of the region. Step two, rethinking new policy instruments in the Euro-Mediterranean cooperation and collaboration level. Step three, reinforcing networking opportunities on higher education institutions level with enterprises and socioeconomic realities. By sharing and comparing micro-credentials experiences in the digital transformation era in one thing, learning and teaching tank, we can explore further challenges and opportunities to identify supportive mechanism, processes and partnerships that can enhance digital and virtual education and accreditation to micro-credentials as part of a solution and beyond. As we can see, history is being written with great speed and we are faced with choices and decisions that will define our university future. We do not yet know what the full impact of the pandemic will be on us. However, we know that the emerging economic crisis lead to the loss of jobs. This will have drastic consequences on the ability of youth to advance with their education.
Therefore, each, situ each, each situation must coordinate efforts to ensure continuity of learning by applying micro-credentials to protect domestic and international financing. The quest for maintaining a priority for financing and greater international cooperation is to help to ensure the continuation of education in what is likely to be very challenging times, as it comes coupled with a request for greater efficiency and accountability so we can continue to add value to national efforts to advance education for all relevant a changing world. All of this underlines the importance of an overreaching educational framework of trust and cooperation. We need to be more recognized and more highly valued. Teachers are essential participants in defining the future of education. Today, it is clear that nothing can substitute for collaboration between teachers whose function is not to apply ready-made technologies or pre-prepared patterns. In conclusion, community-engaged and community-led learning is a crucial component of education and must be central to any micro-credential strategy that addresses present and future challenges. The use of digital challenges for learning has generated interest for many years, and technologies have overgrown in the context of the COVID-19 crisis interest in micro-credentials. The forced scramble for materials and platforms that we have seen during the pandemic possess a significant risk to the teaching profession and its autonomy. It could have severe consequences for the future of education. Therefore, our efforts should focus on educators to develop ownership of material with open educational resources by applying micro-credentials to avoid being dependent on digital platforms provided by the private profitable companies. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Claybo, for sharing with us uh, this concrete example and also for this uh, action-oriented uh, proposals. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. I think now we have uh, um, we have seen uh, a little bit of insights uh, on on the topic of micro credentials and a concrete application of micro credentials. Uh, we have in the chat some uh, remarks, uh, some comments. Um, I understand that our uh, participants uh, cannot uh, um, cannot uh, contribute uh, uh, lively, but only through the chat. Uh, so I, I would like first to kindly ask, uh, in particular, um, there were some comments and remarks from um, uh, Professor uh, Ben Aziza, I think uh, uh, Mr. Klebo elaborated a little bit on that, uh, but in case uh, you want to uh, say or ask more, uh, please do so. Uh, then we have uh, a couple of questions. So we have a question from uh, uh, Mr. Arel Sufi that I <laughs> say hello. Uh, we know each other for, we have been knowing each other for many years. So can the micro-credentials be recognized within the ICM exchange projects? I think this is a question for <laughs> Mr. Claybo. Yes, I actually do accredit uh, this. If my students are attending ICM Mobility, uh, I give them a certain percentage, but nevertheless, ICM is like the old version. Now we have the new version, which is the virtual education. So having the Erasmus Plus offering a, a lot of training opportunities to attend virtual trainings, I give credit for this as micro-credentials for my students. Unfortunately, because I'm not supported by the policymakers by the Ministry of Higher Education and by my home university. They give me the authority to give the credits, but I still hope that um, those uh, co-curriculum activities are to be valued and th this uh, international assessment uh, to be accredited and it's a value added by all means. And we are contributing to the 21st century skills, developing students and graduates to be facing a better labor uh, career, especially for students who are really enthusiastic. These co-curriculum activities and virtual trainings aside to the IT, ICM and other programs are value added by all means. Thank you very much. Um... 
I have here another question and uh, RF, uh, if you want to ask more, please uh, do so. Or uh, in any case, uh, of course, uh, our panelists are available also afterwards if you want to continue the exchange. Um, so we have a question here. Don't you think that training students to develop a learning portfolio could boost a micro-credential approach and support lifelong learning mindset? from Nada Mogaisel, uh, St. Joseph Uni University of Beirut. Maybe I ask my colleagues, uh, Arjen Anatoly, to... Yeah, I mean, here, of course, the issue is uh, whether we're using, let's say, this idea of the, the skills audit, the belong the competence, we we'll see what is their interest, what they have learned, or whether we really want to measure what they've learned, for which we then need standards, for which we then need micro-credentials. So, some of this portfolio can probably be recognized through micro credentials if they are available. First of all, we must make sure we have them, yeah, because they're not there yet. Uh, of course, so, so, so for which they, of course, have to also be able to choose. So we need also information systems saying, look, uh, you can find this, you can find that, uh, to what extent what you have, what you already have learned can be recognized by that. Yeah, so, 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 so that. That is a bit of a problem. So it's not that this is so easy. It's not automatic. It's not what everybody has as, as their own competences. It does mean that you go through some kind of validation process. Uh, and, and, and that means it's quality assured and it's assessed. So, so, so there is a tension, let's say, between capturing all learning and uh, somehow then also measuring that formally because that means that you need to have uh, some process in place to do that. I mean, because Anatoly has been stressing very much this idea of quality assurance, standards, learning outcomes, uh, or formally accredited. He has also said this is very important. Of course, this gives value, this gives portability, but, but um, it does mean we need to think differently about the learning processes. Yeah? I also think that those micro-credentials are not only for students, but they are also very much for graduates. People are already out of education, but actually they have had an education that is not any more adequate. At least, so, so, so I think there's a role of universities too. And I don't know to what extent the universities in, in, in the Unimed area have been thinking about this. If I may add, uh, I, think, I think that the future of credentials are in digital credentials, in digitalization of qualifications, and here micro credentials can much contribute to, to the development of the process. As as I mentioned, micro credentials could be part of qualifications, and, and that facilitate just breaking into parts of big qualifications. And this whole things might be digitalized, and. It, in this sense, we need to train students to develop digital portfolios, to train students use digital credentials, digital market credentials. And there is this a space for, for the universities to issue digital credentials, included market credentials. In this case, if digitalized, they could be linked to CVs, to digital portfolios, to individual learning accounts. Uh, Micro credentials could be owned, owned by a student by a student used using the blockchain technologies. So there is a space for a lot of projects on digitalization for the university. And as well, learning students to develop a follow up could be a micro credentials itself, yes, of course. Thank you, thank you, Anatoly. If uh, Mr. Klebo and uh, Marcello want to elaborate or add, um, I would just like to take the last um, question uh, received from RF about uh, uh, the, um, the survey results for the ETF. Um, Anatoly has shared the link in the chat, but I can send it also as a... Uh, as, um, as a as a direct message, uh, yeah, and uh, yes, uh, these are just uh, results of the ETF survey. But we are preparing the report 
uh, with the analysis of these uh, results and we soon will publish it on ETF open space platform and we will inform you about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Claybo, you also wrote in the chat, maybe you want to elaborate? Well, it's very simple. You know, it's what hat are you wearing or what cap are you wearing at the moment? Are you a decision maker? Are you working on policy making? Are you an executor or are you a student or a teacher? So it's, it's where are you standing now? At the moment, for me, this platform, we can start creating the wheel. We can start creating, imposing a policy with practices and it can be like a call for all the people who worked on this initiative individually to put all our practice into creating a kind of a policy. Like I have a paper that I can present to you and I, we can share it. Um, I scripted in the last three, collectively in the last three years, a kind of script that works with our region because there are some policies that you need to come with um, from uh, top to bottom and you are other policies that has to be integrated from grassroots up. So. Each country, each region has its own dynamics. The question is, is it important to talk about it and discuss it? Yes. Is it important? Already we are late. We need to work on it fast. But the thing is, you know, how can we do it? We don't want to go into a loop where it, there's a start with no end. And whatever we are initiating, we should put it in a kind of a measurement time frame and to collect the best practices and acknowledge the people who are working on these things because it's not being acknowledged. Some people are doing, me personally, I'm doing it solo. I'm doing it out of uh, pleasure. I'm having great time because I've been doing it for the past three years. So I always keep on discussing under the, all the circumstances we're living in Palestine with all the pressure and challenges. I want to create a way and a path that works for me. And Thanks to God, heavenly, I managed to find a way that worked. Most probably it will work in the Arab region and in the Middle East. So let's start talking policies. What is the method, the way that we as educators address higher, educate, higher education, our university, to make a call to the Ministry of Higher Education to go to the UNIMED to create a policy and later on top down, to create this policy and impose it on everybody. So as everybody mentioned, it's very important to have the assessment, the quality assurance, and to create the wheel and to be accredited and fully recognized. And it's part of the system of academia. Logic. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Mr. Claybo. I think, I mean, if colleagues uh, who are connected uh, uh, from universities and want to share also their own experience, uh, uh, you are, you're very welcome. Uh, I wanted to ask Marcello if uh, you have any questions for our panelists or any comments, uh, uh, remarks. Well, no, I am not in the position to, to, to make comments or remarks, but I have, um, first of all, I thank all the speakers because, as I said at the beginning with my intervention, I, uh, my intention was to learn and I learned a lot, uh, not only about my credential, but also, also the path that we have in front of us to improve in the region. Um, thinking uh, thinking uh, again on the my intervention and the importance of to, to imagine a policy on micro uh, and also to imagine, uh, as he said, also not only to have new policy but also the commitment of our ministry of education, the region. Uh, this is, I, I think, that is the most critical point. Uh, because, for instance, in South America, we don't have, before COVID-19, we didn't have a clear policy uh, on uh, e-learning. Just to talk about today, that with the COVID arrived in a very urgent way in all South America countries, but there were not a clear policy on e-learning, except for some uh, country. Now they are forced to move to a new digital education uh, dimension, but obviously they are, they are in a way 
recovering the, the tax. Uh, and I think that we have the same problem if we look at this topic of micro credential. But for sure, we have some potential key issue, which is how to improve employability of our youth. And this credential, as you say, as the speaker said, is a very important element, not the only one. But it's a very my question is for Arjen or Anatoly, because it is related to MADI intervention. MADI clearly say that we need for sure a policy framework uh, to discuss, to debate with our ministries, how to include micro-credential formally in the higher education system. Otherwise, we are not able to involve academics in this. You work very close with government, with government of third countries, South Med, Western Balkan, and not only. What is your impression on this? Uh, do you think that governments are ready to, at least, to debate and so on? Or there is some obstacles and we have to find a way, as Mindy said, to work together at the beginning among higher education institutions to put on the table some very important results and the ministry in a way, ministries in a way are obliged to listen to us. This is normally what we do in UNIMED style. And for instance, and I close my, my, my question, we launched, we ask, we are asking for a new ministerial conferences on higher education, Euro Mediterranean Ministerial Conference on Higher Education and Research. Probably research will be done in the next semester of 2022, but not so higher education. The last one was in Cairo in 2007. You can imagine how many years, uh, 15 years after, the, change, the world is totally changed, in particular in education, but not only. And it's very urgent to organize a conference on this. I don't know if there will be the political agreement, but I think that also, one of the topics of this potential ministerial conference could be micro-credential or the qualification framework, which could include also micro-credential. But it's very difficult to talk about this at regional level. But I would like to know your impression. Sorry to be so long. Can you hear me? Well, I'll be very honest. Um... We're living in a very hard situation. We don't know to where we are heading, but I would say under the title of micro-credentials comes and falls underneath the ICM mobility, underneath comes the virtual trainings, anything that has to do with co-curriculum activities. By accrediting the micro-credentials, you open the portal for all these small initiatives that are still not being acknowledged by number of higher education universities. So this would be a great portal. As for the government, and representatives this i think they are open to anything that would help to reduce the number and percentage of the unemployment uh, uh, nevertheless i would highlight something else which is it's very important to mention the words uh, like globalized citizenship for youth so micro credentials will give the space for the students to breathe by attending these courses by developing despite all the circumstances that we're living but it will open doors for diversity and most important to be familiar with the system so it's a matter of individual competition whoever would like to up to go up the scale has to attend these certi certified attendees in the, these programs nevertheless to be backed up by policy and by their home universities but there's only one small issue my problem is not in the system my problem is not by the government my problem is not with the students my problem is with the teachers who are not initiating to advance in education what is important if i develop a policy and i develop the students and the teachers are not collaborating and they are not meant to be educators what have you done in the, cri in the crisis during the pandemic? What have you done? What conferences have you attended? What paperwork did you achieve? So this is really a good opportunity for the universities to reconsider who is qualified to be a teacher or not. One more thing, just to, to complete this bouquet of flowers. I have students who I have blended them into these programs. For the past three years, I intensively graduated a number of students and later on, I measured their impact. 
what is the impact? The student is becoming more globalized than the teacher. He's having a sophisticated language and the teacher is completely ignorant. He has no idea what the student is talking about when he's talking about his rights, the human rights, globalized citizenship, issues around the world, the dialogue, the script, the, the presentation. So here comes a gap of communication. So if you don't invest in the teachers and in the system in a way or another to oblige them to develop, what is the use of creating this entire wheel? The government will give you the okay. Yeah, there's no problem. Give me money and I'll give you authority to do anything. There's no problem. As long as you don't ask for me to money, I'm fine. But in between the labor market, students, authority, teachers, the weakest circle is the teacher. Where are the teachers who are self-initiators and developers? Where are they? How many are they? But those minor, do you know something? I've noticed after the after the uh, the pandemic, many of the highly qualified teachers are disengaged disengaged from academia. They are not interested in giving lectures online. They feel completely disengaged. Their passion for education lost. We lost a number of highly qualified teachers because simply this era of pandemic disengaged them, and the university kept on. I'm not talking about my home university, I'm talking in general. In all, universities are concentrating on the only on the number of students and education being presented online. Between the corona and the material that needs to be presented online to study online, those teachers are suffering, suffocated. Their work, they are doing the work multiplied, if not four times. Where's the acknowledgement? Where's the measurement? Who is doing his best and creating a kind of scripts? Where? There's nothing. So there's a miscommunication in understanding the situation as a whole. But there's no problem to create the policy. And I would be so happy and delighted if the UNIMED takes the initiative into collecting all these initiatives of individuals, putting them into one report, creating a loop of, uh, of universities and presenting it to the higher education and creating a policy. Well, that would be a great success story. And it's doable and achievable, but it doesn't cost money. Because already there are people who have already invented in their script, in their scenarios, what are the best practices. You don't have to do a lot of training. There are qualified people who can transfer their knowledge. I'm willing to discuss it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Claypo. I think we have now around five minutes to, to then uh, wrap up. And um, thanks for, I would like to echo uh, the words of uh, our participant, uh, Ms. Yamina El Kirat El Alam, who is uh, thanking you for your inspiring talk and leading initiative. For sure, passion is uh, an important ingredient, an ingredient to trigger. Uh, change, then of course we have other challenges and uh, as you said, uh, there are more areas uh, to be further explored and uh, on which uh, we could further um, discuss. Uh, I give the floor to Arian and then I will try to take a few more uh, questions uh, uh, that I think can be um, can be somehow uh, dealt with uh, in a bit uh, shorter time. Arian? floor is yours. Ariane, you are muted, so thank you. To react to Marcello and also to Matti, uh, I think uh, we need to indeed think about the next step. What do we do after today? Yeah. So, so and uh, how are we going to raise awareness and how are we going to use those a few good examples? Because I agree that, you know, one of the problems that we saw, I worked on qualifications reforms for, for 25 years. Always the problem with policymakers is that they will not take any decision if they don't understand. So they have to understand first. So we need to actually make it easy for them to understand that this is added value. There are success stories. The success stories that, that Matthew was mentioning, they are very important because it, it's a way of selling the, the, the idea. So I think there we need to start thinking together. What we would like to do is to develop some guidelines, but we can also think about having some, some webinars or, or, or doing something with policymakers. But we need the success stories. They are important. 
uh, where it really also you can see this this, this impact on, on on transition to the labor market uh, not only the success story of having nicely defined the learning outcomes and doing uh, quality assurance of the process it's about getting results uh, so that so that's i think is very important that we need to focus on uh, we are trying to work in many areas at the moment which are linked Especially, I agree also with Mati. A lot of the things develop also on what's online available. Yeah, so so people will find have to find these examples, and they need to be part of systems. Maybe Unimed can also do something, sharing information, etc., between different countries. Uh, this ICM mobility, of course, that it's, it's logical that there should be a link. I think also for Erasmus Plus, there should be a link. Yeah, so so. So I think this idea of, of, of having credit transfer, and of course Erasmus is going to open up to that. Next year, it will be much more open, much more global, much more things will be possible. So also micro-credentials, they will be possible in the next round of Erasmus. So I think we need to be ready by then with also ideas that are concrete so that you can get also projects in there with universities from the network that actually going to develop some of those very valuable micro credentials that can really address, let's say, the, the employment needs of, uh, of, 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 of the youth from, from Unimac. So I think we, we need to think a bit about the concrete steps. The policymakers are important, but I agree also with Mati. A lot depends on people who take the initiative. They're not the policymakers, probably. They're not gonna make micro credentials they're not going to deliver them so so so, so both needs both sides need work and we need to work on this i think together because the idea is new we are waiting now the commission will probably uh, adopt a recommendation by the end of the year so then there is sort of formal approach to this uh, also uh, say the focus organizing is doing a huge study also in vet because I, the whole thing started very much in higher education, but we're now looking much more at these micro-credentials as being something broader than only higher education, also for, for continuing training and out learning especially. So, 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 so we need to see a little bit by the end of the year what, what formal decisions are there. This uh, UNESCO uh, definition is useful, but it's, a, it's what they call a conversation starter. So it's not yet formal. So, so, so we need to move into a direction where we could have these standards, and we could have best practices, and move forward with this. We want to work on this. Uh, we're going to work also on trying to, to look at database of qualifications in different countries, making sure that there are those micro-credentials in there, that there are links to learning opportunities, to guidance and counseling, to, to employment opportunities, because a lot of these things are, are going to be digitalized in the future. But uh, this is all work that takes time and we need to think about this, I think, together with. It would be good to have some, some concrete next steps. Maybe Anatoly, because he's leading this area, he could say some words on this. Yes, if I may just say that uh, we have still one question. If uh, Maybe we can take it uh, before we wrap up, uh, which is about uh, data uh, availability on employers' perspectives on micro-credentials. Uh, if I may try to what Arian previously said. Please. Uh, our survey shows that national authorities are open to discussions on micro-credentials and we received a, 10% of feedback, from, this, is, this is the feedback from national authorities. So they're, they're open for discussions. On the other hand, the international policy is, aspect is important here because ministries are policy bodies. bodies. Uh, as Aaron mentioned, uh, we are expecting EU recommendations on market credentials, but at the same time, market credentials are already part of the EU policy. They are part of discussions within Bologna process. They are part of EU skills agenda. So th this is already a motivation 
all the ministries to look at the market credentials seriously. And whether uh, following the next question on whether the information on uh, labor market stakeholders is available, labor market, market representative is available. And now CDFOP is conducting research, a big research uh, within the EU countries on attitudes on application and the use of market credentials uh, by labor market stakeholders, trade unions, and other stakeholders. And we expect uh, the first reports until the end of the year. And as far as I know, they are organizing a conference in, at the end of November. And I think we, we need to check when the, this event will happen, but we will know some more information. And at least what we have now is this just responses, opinions from different stakeholders. And we will publish what we have in our report. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think we can uh, move to the uh, closing session. Um, I would like just to uh, say that uh, I posted uh, uh, what also Arya mentioned uh, on the development of guidelines. So the call for practical examples, uh, you, can, uh, you can get in contact with us. Uh, there was also, um, Mr. Claybo mentioned an article. He, he, um, uh, he wrote on this topic uh, and um, there was a request to share it. So if you, if you can share it already now in the chat, uh, otherwise uh, maybe we can uh, get organized with our Unimed colleagues uh, to share it afterwards. Uh, you also kindly shared some of your uh, next steps, uh, very practical uh, action-oriented uh, next step actions. I think uh, it would be nice uh, to have um, one last word from, uh, from uh, our panelists, uh, but also from our invitees. So if you want to share um, a takeaway or maybe even a question that uh, you would like to further explore in the chat, uh, it would uh, certainly help uh, in the shaping of this uh, future, um, future, let's say, fil rouge of the conversation that will certainly continue. I think for me, the takeaway is that uh, there is uh, much more to discuss, much more to reflect upon, and, uh, and also many, many uh, input for, for joining forces and uh, to cooperate together to move uh, forward. So I'm... I ask our panelists if they want to say a last word, uh, take away from, from, from today's meeting and also at the same time to our invitees. If I may, just, just one, a couple of words. The, as the Bologna process has changed the landscape of higher education in Europe, a shared concept of market credentials can, can change the landscape of life and learning systems. Make it credentials and not a hype. They're here to remain. Thank you, Anatoly. Who's next? Yes. It's open, it's free. Okay. <laughs> I would say that I'd I would be very pleased if we can develop a think tank for educators because my main concern is the weakest point, which is educators. Uh, we need to work on a policy where we can create a, an easy to approach and develop accreditation and the teachers to, to understand the concept because eventually they are the executors. So I don't want to enforce a policy where they are obliged to do something they don't believe in. So I would say that main focus is teachers and whatever we develop, Definitely, I would love to support my colleagues in academia to develop their skills. Thank you. Thank you. Ariane, you want to share something? I think this is just also just a conversation starter, this event. So we need more discussions and we need to hear more voices. I mean, I see, of course, the chat and there's a lot of interest and a lot of ideas. Uh, we need a little bit more discussion on these ideas because I think they are important. 
there are opportunities and we need some structural work on trying to move these things really forward with some also some critical discussion on what we've done and what we can do and how we can move forward. So I hope that we could possibly with this idea on the guidelines, if people agree with that, that idea, that we could actually start working together with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, panelists. Uh, you have been really, for me, a learning opportunity. And uh, so I thank you for that. Um, I, I came with the uh, questions. I come out of this <laughs> webinar with more questions, but uh, I think it's uh, this is the learning process, I guess. So I will now give the floor to Marcello for some uh, closing remarks. Uh, before doing that, I would really like to thank all invitees who have been with us, uh, who have contributed to the chat, uh, and to, of course, uh, also um, Marcello, Manuela, and uh, uh, our panelists uh, and to UNIMED for uh, giving us this opportunity. As uh, it has been shared in the chat, uh, the PowerPoint uh, will be available on the website of the uh, UNIMED week and the recording will also be shared in the coming days when the um, program will be uh, over. So I give the floor to Marcello for some closing remarks and thank you very much from my side. Thank you, Sabina. Uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, for me was a sort of learning process. But now I arrive at the end with a, a work plan, which is quite interesting and also adds some more problem to my agenda, but it's a very interesting work plan. Um, first of all, I think that UNIMED and, and I hope jointly with ETF I totally agree with that. And we have to work to create the right environment around the micro potential. I, I, I am happy to know that, as Anatoly said, that the government are interested to, to talk about. I, I would like to have a look in particular to Southern Mediterranean government and to see, because potentially speaking, they say yes, then, because as Madi said, educators is the key point. But how to support educators if we don't have? Uh, autonomy of universities if we don't have academic freedom because otherwise uh, we try to support them but if they can't do in a direction with their own autonomy obviously uh, this is something related to the governance of our education system it's a, it's a, a more important problem and I think that we have to work on it but first of all I agree with you on, on the, the topic of to create the right environment and I think that joining forces would be interesting for us, for UNIMED at least, and with ETF to, to do something on this. I think that is probably there is room for reflection for a large initiative, uh, a regional initiative on micro-credential in the Mediterranean region, to try to involve all the actors around this discussion. And I, I think that we have to add also in this discussion, students' organization, to try to involve also them in this in this debate, and I think that uh, following the uh, indication suggestion of Madi, uh, is also time to reflect on a capacity building projects to start from bottom up also to try to have a, a, an initiative on teachers educators uh, on on a capacity building dimension, but also trying to involve in this also the the, the, the authority. The national authorities is now time because the call for proposal will be launched in October. There are small projects, but it's something to move at least in, in the contents and to move uh, to create the right uh, the right environment and also to create hopefully the condition for some success story on on uh, on micro credential. Uh, but I would like to come back to a comment that our Secretary General, Professor uh, Hamid Benazita, uh, did at the beginning. The reason why we do all this, which is one con the contribution to exit from the poverty. I think that microcredential could play an important role, like obviously the, 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 uh, the, the answer to improve the higher education system, for instance, is another answer. But more in particular, microcredential could play a role on this. And this is important for our vision, for our values, 
to do all these because we believe that through micro-credential we could create the right condition for our youth not only to find a job, which is obviously extremely important, but to find their place in the, in the society. Uh, this is what we try to do, UNIMED, and I know also ETF, to contribute to create this Mediterranean generation. We need youth able to understand each other independently where they are. Virtual exchange play an important role on this. Um, the digitalization, for sure, can play an important role. But again, micro-credential and this global citizenship will help us to reinforce this idea of a Mediterranean, not Euro Mediterranean, but Mediterranean generation. I have to thank all the speakers again for your intervention, for your uh, availability and for your uh, suggestions, all the invitees, as uh, Sabina said, and let me also thank uh, my colleagues in UNIMED, uh, Silvia Marchion and Federica De Giorgi for the work that they do uh, in uh, uh, for the cooperation with the ETF, um, generally speaking, for the coordination with the sub-network, employability and entrepreneurship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, absolutely. I want to echo the thanks message also to, to Silvia Marchione and Federica Di Giorgi because we have been working so closely together to prepare this. And uh, although you don't see them, they are a big uh, ingredient for the success of today's meeting. So thank you very much. And we close uh, our um, webinar of today and uh, see you in the next one uh, that I think is uh, coming up tomorrow, right? Yes, tomorrow we have the, the final webinar of the Unimed weeks, two weeks very intensive to say. Uh, tomorrow we will have the session with Diginia to talk more practically about the new agenda for South Med and also the new agenda for South Med could be an important, could play an important role in micro credential issues. We have to talk about, I think that we have to organize a meeting on this. And to, we started the first day with the, the, the European, the European uh, External Action Service to debate about the policy dimension of the new agenda. And we will finish tomorrow with the Genia to go more in, in practical terms about what does it mean this new agenda concretely. And I think that these two weeks are very, very intense. All the webinars are, have been recorded and will be, will be available on the, our channels very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you to all. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.